On this episode of Woodwalkers. It all comes down to tonight. Braces have been cut, cross arms are cockeyed. They cut them down. We've been untangling lines from other power lines. A simulated storm has rolled through the town. Lots of guy wires down. We're going to have to make sure they've got their lines isolated as well. You're going to die if you make contact. Now, they have to get the power back on. If uh, this was a real case scenario, I would have been dead man. You want the winch line straight so the butt doesn't kick back into the truck. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's a lot of work out here. The next time you're doing this is for real. It'll look just like a storm has come through. All the instructors will tear the line up like a hurricane or a tornado. We'll just demolish it. And then the guys have to come in and uh, restore it. Pretty hairy stuff out there. Cross arms barely hanging on by a bolt or a hard head. People have to be sharp and listen and be team oriented. These guys figure out how to delegate their manpower, their time, and their tools. They do that on their own. Communication is huge. It could save somebody's life. The past 10 weeks that they've worked out here getting it in perfect condition, now they've got to basically start all over and rebuild it in one night. So they're going to finally realize that they did learn something. I'm very excited. I know the last class got some rain and a lot of wind. Oh, night training to be fun. I feel like my PC's ready for it, we're all comfortable. If uh, you're not on the same page and people are bickering back and forth, then it's gonna be a long night. I think it's gonna be good for us to finally see us working as a team and like actually have like a goal and actually knowing what we're doing. All the instructors, they go in, they wreck out their line. They'll cut wire, they'll cut poles down, cut cross arms up. We take 45 minutes to an hour and destroy the line till it's unrecognizable. Uh, I like to go through and mess up some of the services on the transformers, swap some leads around, uh, cut some legs here and there. That, that way they kind of have to troubleshoot it. So when they're on the pole, they really have to pay attention to everything, not just the broken arms or, or the wire and stuff like that. There's a lot of little things up there too that they have to pay attention to. Night training is their big night to perform it after dark. Their job is to simulate a power outage. We'll remove transformers off the pole like they fell off the pole. They're pretty much gonna have to climb every pole, drop some wire out, just leave it. I destroyed my line. The other instructors were coming up to me, hi, you think we're gonna get out of here tonight or what? Because I tore my line up so bad. There's wire everywhere, services damaged, transformers damaged, cross arms broke into, so they're gonna have their hands full. Like I said, they're gonna be a while to fix this. We're tearing down a pole so the students can get a vision on how to change a pole out at nighttime. I'm looking for them to swing the pole and frame it up in front of the headlights using common sense. Fix and load up a 40 and we're gonna pull it on over there so they'll have a pole on site. This is the first time the students get to work as a team without the instructor's lead. Getting their hands dirty and doing the work they have been training for, storm work. Before the night begins, the instructors bring the students in for a safety briefing. Even in a controlled environment with de-energized lines, there are many hazards that the students need to be aware of. All right, just a couple of uh, things we need to point out. You don't go just running outside, jumping on a pole. Assess the damage, uh, find out where all your hazards are at, 
We're not looking for perfect sags. You have got to take your time, assess everything. We're not in a hurry. Remember, storm work is get the lines up, get the power on, so it can be heated up safely. I think some guys may have leaned some poles over. You may have to take the wire down to be most efficient working on five spans down. We've given you everything you need, now you put it together. So y'all have to work all that out. Communicate, safety, all night. Don't take no shortcuts. Keep down on the mistakes. Have fun. All right, go to your lines. Hey! Be easy. Relax a little bit. That's the biggest thing on Storm, you know, get a game plan, figure out what they're gonna do, and then go to execute it. For many of the students, Storm work will become one of the major parts of their career. When nature strikes, linemen are the first to respond. They have to get the power back on so that recovery can start. What these tornadoes did to our line that touched down last night. Hurricane Cody Todd? Yeah. <laughs> Cody said Todd was going to absolutely destroy it. I was like, here we go. They cut them down. They're laying under the trees. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Grab it off. What is it? What do we win? <laughs> a headlamp. That's all I've heard about all week is them freaking rocks. So y'all don't lose them rocks. Uh-huh. Woo! We have a winner. Yep. Here, put the rock back in here. I got a little thing I do with the foreman. They draw rocks for it. I've had those rocks for quite a while. They draw a black rock. He's a foreman, so it's kind of like you should be paying attention to the first 13 weeks because whoever's foreman better know what he's doing and how to get everything lined out. Okay, now, mm -hmm. he's a foreman. We ain't stepping in. And but something happens, this is on y'all. The next time you're doing this, it's for real, probably. You understand that, right? Mm. Are we rolling out new wire? Don't look at me. You're the foreman, Mike. Safety's gonna be the first thing. Now, they're gonna have some cross arms, free hanging, as we call widow makers up in the air. Um, got enough damage, probably last them about six hours. That's the goal. Of course, they have to pay attention to uh, what they're grabbing hold of because there is loose, you know, bolts, nuts up there. But most important thing is staying in communication with one another. Working on lines before they've been identified, isolated, tested, and grounded is probably the most dangerous aspect of getting out there and getting ahead of yourself. They're going to run into back feed on a circuit. They're going to run into capacitance on underground cable induction from a nearby line. There, there could be any number of things that could happen that they won't live to see retirement. We don't work anything energized, but we do want them to understand the, the grounding process. What's our number one objective tonight? Safety. Safety, safety. safety correct. Lights, lights are secondary, right? If we, if we get hurt, we can't continue to fix power lines. So first of all, let's do this. John, you're going to be our foreman tonight. There's the purple. There's the purple, purple clipboard of honor. <laughs> All right, guys. John, he is me tonight. You guys do what he says with respect. Likewise, you treat your crew with respect. Keep them working. John, it's on you. Be safe. Good job. Good luck. We'll have Adam run the north end. Dale run the south end. We're gonna have to collaborate with the next guys, next line over, and make sure they've got their lines isolated as well. I say we hang ground by the switches. Yeah, and grounds. Racky grounds down there and then somewhere up here. Take, one of the first things we do, the first thing we do, taking a stendo stick and uh, pull fuses. Some of the poles are damaged, some of them aren't. We're just, we've been assessing it, identifying what's wrong, what's not wrong. Here in a little bit, once we all get a game plan set, we're going to execute and get, the, get everything back up and rolling. Get the power back on. One major reason why I got into the lineman industry was because one of my good buddies happens to be a grunt apprentice lineman. He told me, he's like, man, you will not regret it. Go where the money's at. And then I told my mom and dad, and they eventually didn't mind it. I wasn't keen on it. <laughs> Why can't you just get another job somewhere else? Something a little bit safer. No travel, no electricity. 
I, I just use that as motivation. My family and friends that I have, they are a very good support group. Just knowing that whenever I can come back home, I can come home to a house full of friends and family, it's just, it's relieving. As night falls and storm training begins, students will start replacing broken poles, severed wires, and any other challenges the instructors may have thrown their way. We got big bad Drew up there in his driver's seat. There you go. All right, bring the butt to the ground. You want the winch line straight so that the butt doesn't kick back into the truck. All you need to do is go slow and steady and take your time. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Sting out, cable down. There you go, yeah. Okay, you can set it. You know that this butt is waterlogged. There's a lot of weight right here. So I would say probably center point's gonna be right in here. So, yeah, right here, try it. As a pole sits right in the ground, in. over time it can become waterlogged. This could alter the point of balance when lifting it with a winch line. It's important for the groundman and crane operator to find the correct point of balance so that they can move the pole safely. So it is uh, storm night. I'm the foreman at PC5. And we split up south end, north end. Braces have been cut, cross arms are cockeyed. And now I'm just going up and down the line, checking to make sure each group knows what they're doing. And uh, we're making some progress. We've been safe, no one's been injured, and uh, been a lot of fun. All right, I'll go start on some tie wire. I might have to read it. You know, it all comes down to tonight. And uh, communication is key. So far, everything's been very fluid. We're all communicating really well, and it's fun. It's working out really well. Cross arms are broken. We've been untangling lines from other power lines. Uh, we got this, uh, this pole's missing its cross arms completely. Uh, had to fix the guy, re-guy uh, re it. We're gonna go up there, get this cross arm up, and then we gotta uh, re-sag the wire. So, I mean, it's a lot of organized chaos. A lot of people doing a lot of different things. Everybody's trying to communicate with each other the best so we can get these, uh, get these lines back up as fast as we can uh, and as safe as we can. It's a lot of work out here. A lot to be done. Easy there, Godzilla. I want you to use the hoist. We got a set of snatch blocks right there. Use those then. Now hook the hand line to the other end of the snatch block. The students need to stay in constant communication with each other. Being safe and efficient is key to a successful restoration. Pull the what? what? Show them how to send up these snatch blocks. It's ready. You got a spool up there? I don't, I don't have a neutral bar. You don't need a neutral bar. When you've got 20 something guys out there in a night, you know, that sometimes they might lose a little focus and you have to be there to uh, put them back in the line. The damn slack block just clipped into the damn service. <laughs> I've always excelled at, you know, just being able to come up with uh, solutions on the spot. And so in line work, you gotta assess it and figure out how to get her done. Hey. Try not to do that again. I had a crew that went down to open all the solid blade disconnects. And I had another crew that was opening all the transformers up to isolate the circuit from any type of back feed. Well, anyway, <laughs> the rest of the crews were up on the pole before the line was ever grounded out. So out of 19 guys, 14 guys got a write up. If uh, this was a real case scenario, which we're treating as one, I would have been a dead man. Luckily, since it's night training, you know, it's not energized, but that just shows how, uh, how serious we got to take things. I don't want them to ever forget that again, because when they get in the real world, I want them to go through all the proper steps. Otherwise, if they don't, chances are that, you know, you're going to die if you make contact. 
So that write-up is to be in the back of their mind the next time they think about doing that. The most important element of line work is keeping the crew and yourself safe. Even though the lines are de-energized during this simulation, the instructors are still taking into account what would have been fatal mistakes. And you can spin the pole where you need it. Yeah, if you go down there, the boat goes through right here. The head's got to go through this side. Look, when we had class, what was the number one rule? Which way does the guy go? On the brand side of the pole, right? Out of the guy. set up correctly and really I don't know. Just thinking about five steps ahead when it whenever y'all are doing this. We have plenty of line down, plenty of cross arms broke, braces off, phases hanging out, uh, neutrals gone, lots of guy wires down. It's uh, it's fun. It's going to keep us busy most of the evening. You could tighten the uh, snatch blocks up a little more just to give you room to wrap that preform if you need to. Once you pull one wire up, each one you pull up gives a different tension and then the, the slack changes on the line. So it takes a little bit of practice to get all the lines equal distance apart. Uh, probably the biggest lesson I have learned is that even if they disagree, people are able to shrug those indifferences off and uh, communicate, especially night training. Our communication was the best communication we have ever had in all of our training. You feel comfortable with that? Yeah. All right, awesome. I know I got a lot more practicing to do. <laughs> are y'all just going crimp it? In the field, line workers have access to many different types of equipment. Cutting and compression tools are some of the most commonly used. With Husky hydraulic hand tools, the linemen can be more efficient with less fatigue and perform the task with a single hand. Love it. Life made easy. We can use this H block does the same thing a one bolt clamp does except it's a compression connection. So you start out on one end, watch your fingers. Okay, go ahead. And that's it. Connection has been made. The hardest part, I mean, it's a whole different deal whenever you're working at night. Uh, you've got limited vision, you're kind of looking through a tunnel, and then you kind of forget to communicate because you're trying to stay so focused. So. Well, we just finished our part of night training out here in the field. We all got our time on the pole. We all got time to go up there, experience working at night. We all work together as a team. No one got mad. No one got frustrated. We all got the job done and everyone's safe and going home in peace. And now it's time to cool off, rest, and uh, wait on graduation day. You guys were able to see what it was like working at night. Uh, it's a whole different ball game out there. I think you handle yourselves really well, especially the pole changing crew. They work together as a team, they looking out for each other. That's what it's really all about. And it's been a great 15 weeks with you guys. And I uh, feel like we turned out some really good hands here. You should be proud of yourself. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't ask for a better night class. Everybody did their job. Everybody did it safely. You know, over the past 10 weeks, they're learning stuff every day. Uh, but when it comes to night class, that's when they really realize how much they've learned. They get to put it all together. We kind of leave it on them to uh, get the lines back up and everybody come out and execute it perfectly. 
We worked a lot better than we do during the daytime. <laughs> Most of the time, night training, everybody wants to bring their A game because they're all excited, but you shouldn't just be in a situation like that to bring your A game. You bring your A game every day. Next storm, it's going to be a little harder, but the benefits are going to be a little bit better. Uh, I think every one of you is going to have a good career if y'all keep doing what you're doing, working hard. You guys are not going to have a problem at all in this industry. Some of you will be running crews before you know it. Any feedback on how night training went the other day? We never did get a chance to talk that morning. Pretty Pretty good. Good. I think oh, enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. I thought yeah. it was, yeah, it was, it was a good time. Yeah, it was awesome. Awesome. Make it yeah, harder. I would have loved Two to times. do it again. Do yeah. more? Yeah. Yeah. Should make it a whole week. Back. Keep this in mind. The next night training we do will be weeks before Christmas. It could be single digits or teens here. So that changes quite a bit. One PC had two fatalities, simulated fatalities. Wait, what? Another PC had 13 simulated fatalities. I took a pretty good pay cut to come here. I mean, I got some perks out of it, traveled to Vietnam and China. Um, a little closer to my daughters on this side of the country. Yeah. John, serious question. Yes. How old are your daughters? <laughs> <laughs> I would not let my daughters date alignment. Oh, why is that? It's a dangerous profession, and I don't want either one of them to be widows or their kids to be fatherless. Yeah, that sombered wow, y'all up just... a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> my heart my hit my ass. Ass. Okay. In the 15 weeks that we have been here, I know one solid, credible report of a fatality in Northern California. It's a real thing. I hate to say this, and I hope it doesn't happen. Prove me wrong, guys. Prove me wrong. But in the next 20, 30 years, somebody in class 59 may get seriously injured. Please don't let it be anyone in this PC. Swarm to the storm. Swarm to the storm on three. One, two, three. Swarm to the storm.